what is this gathering, I guess, and, and uh, what's its purpose here today? Well, we, uh, it's, well, it's a, it's a bill of address, and uh, what that is is where the, the, uh, the general court, the legislature, actually goes ahead and uh, says we can't be having our public servants doing things like this. And uh, it looks like the people need to be protected. Open the public hearing on House Address 3 and recognize the prime sponsor, Representative Daniel Ipsett. Good morning, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to members of the committee. For the record, I'm Representative Daniel Itza. I represent Rockingham County District 3, Epping and Fremont. What you have before you here is Volume 1 of what we're going to hear today. It contains uh, the front matter and items 1, 2, and 3 of the Bill of Address. Now, I'm going to be speaking first about um, issues regarding Marital Master Cross. The next uh, item which is included in the, is a, uh, a case where the Supreme Court recognized an instance of uh, Marital Master Cross uh, not providing due process and uh, advised him to pay attention to due process in the future. Uh, there's a pattern of his decisions being appealed. There's also quite a number of instances in which he has been appealed to the Judicial Conduct Committee. Because the purpose of criminal attempt it is to punish disrespect of the court, and to, in, in short. And in this case, it, was, um, it had been called civil contempt, but because it had a definite term, it had the effect of criminal contempt, and, and there had not been sufficient hearing. Item Q is the state of New Hampshire versus Mikey e. Wallace, and here we start getting into some of the really good comparisons of criminal and civil contempt. Um, civil, civil contempt, the purpose is to provide remedy. Money is owed, and the purpose, and you you uh, impose a penalty of civil contempt, a fine, uh, and our incarceration, so to compel the person to make good on the money owed, and it presumes that they have the ability to pay. It, so that in, in essence. The person incarcerated holds the keys to their jail cell. Jail cell. Once they pay, they're out. Uh, versus criminal contempt, where you're put in for a period of time, and it doesn't matter if you, you know, other than if there's a bail associated with it, you can get out on, on bail or cognizance. But there is, it is for a definite time certain. You get out on a time certain. Whereas civil contempt. If you choose to keep yourself in jail indefinitely, you can stay in jail indefinitely. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, one of our witnesses uh, uh, is under uh, is apparently being arrested. Uh, would you have the power to order him to be here? Because if he were ordered to be here, he can't be arrested until after. He's had the opportunity to say his piece. Well, and I'd have to ask, I, I doubt that very much. The, the, Let me call on House Council. Constitutionally, the House and the Senate, as bodies, have the power the to way subpoena. Well, or order. Or order. I do not believe that each of the committees has the. Well, that's why I asked if he could see if the House would make an order that he attend. That well, that attend. would mean to convene the entire House and have a vote. <laughs> Okay, true. That's the only way the House could order it. Unless the rules delegated that authority to the chair, and we do not have delegation of That's true. subpoena powers to chairs of committees, unless you read the Constitution different no, than I, I do in that I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. And collectively, yeah. they're against you. 
Hey, can I help you? Yeah, I'm trying to keep track of what's going on. Okay. I'm uh, State Representative you? Gary Hopper. Yeah. All right. I don't see any need to record this, and you don't have my permission to do it. So Why? Because... Uh, isn't it like a public building? It is, but I'm, I'm asking you to stop. Yeah, but for what reason? I mean, is there any type of law or any reason why he can't? I'm Representative Al Balbasal. How you doing? Yeah, I understand that. I appreciate it if you didn't do it. How's that? Thank you. Getting back, uh, okay. Um, there are there are um, defenses against uh, regarding contempt. Basically, the inability to pay is the primary defense for civil contempt. Mr. Chairman, Representative Renzulo, I'm very much concerned that another branch of government has interfered with this committee in in the fi in, in the finding. And I would like to recess for a few minutes to find out what has occurred relative to a witness that is about to appear here. Was that a key witness to this? I would say yes, seeing as he is the uh, um, one of the litigants in, in uh, Johnson versus Johnson, and is uh, the, one of the individuals who feel he was uh, uh, offended by Master Cross. Mr. Friedman. Um, what I've just learned in the hallway is that um, there is a warrant for uh, Mr. David Johnson, I believe is the gentleman's name, but the sheriffs who are executing the warrant are willing to wait an hour to give him the opportunity to testify um, before they uh, execute that warrant. Um, how much time do you think your, your uh, brother testified? I would ask the permission of the chair to allow David Johnson to say his, you know, uh, recess me and allow David Johnson to uh, make his statement. And I'll chair, have to chair recognizes Mr. David Johnson and representatives. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Representative Baldassar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Representative Baldassaro. Uh, from Rockingham County District 3, which includes Auburn and the town of London. Uh, what threw us off there a little bit today because of the situation with David Johnson had a step up earlier he discussed on quite a bit of area that I was going to testify on. For the record, I need you all need to know I've been involved in this here for the last two to three years. He is a father who has not given up the fight for his daughter. I can tell you many here that we are seeing fathers and mothers, this isn't just about fathers, that are walking away from their children because they can't afford the fight. Many of us have sat on this redress agreements for the last year, not lawyers, there are a few lawyers there, but we are, as non-bipartisan people that have been sitting there, are very caring and, and worried about what is going on with our family court. This is a drop in the bucket which you're hearing today. You would be shocked at the many cases that we could have brought forward here in the state of New Hampshire with the family court. It's all it's funny, all of a sudden, the last couple of days, a woman's put out for his rest, knowing he's coming here to testify for non child support. We're back once again playing the same game with the court system on trying to fight to keep him out of court. So that's what that whole thing was about today. Somebody was trying to stop him from testifying here today because he's no dummy. He's educated himself. He's become an activist for many other fathers and mothers in the state of New Hampshire. The system is broken. And we've been trying to bring this up for two years. If you remember last year in the House, we brought up these redresses. Everyone was all nice about it. Oh, we'll bring it up to the floor. Because nobody had any precedence on how to put this together. Nobody knew. But the bottom line is the Constitution is the last step. Any father or mother that is fighting for the right for the children to protect the interests of their family. That's the last step. Because the Supreme Court, we're not getting any help. There is no appeal process in the family court. I'm going to be arrested today because of Philip Cross. I know. Because of his bogus order. And the other thing, too, is the fact that the courts, the higher courts, the Supreme Court, and the Judicial Conduct Committee continue to do nothing is living proof that they're, they're irrelevant.
Have you filed appeals with the Supreme Court? I have. And what they do is they take the fictitious writing from Philip Cross and say, he has broad discretion. So abuse of discretion is broad discretion. Well, God bless you.